Hi, I'm Dave Katzler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. I have found a problem with the MFJ1788 loop antenna and have fixed it. It does work now. Um, unfortunately, it was due to a problem during manufacturing, uh, but the MFJ warranty allows uh, fixing things. It doesn't void the warranty to fix things. So, in that case, I fixed it. Let's take a look at what happened. First of all, I just want to take this picture from an earlier video uh, and take a close look at it. And I want you to notice where that yellow sticker is placed. Uh, the sticker label is applied off center and it's crooked. Now normally I wouldn't think anything about that. I knew that uh, this was one of a back-ordered set and so they'd probably assembled theirs uh, trying to uh, use as little time as possible. But unfortunately, I think that's more reflective of what went on entirely. Now let me make a quick diversion. At the end of my last video, I talked about a Butternut HF9V vertical antenna that I have and how it uses these little wings as capacitors. So I thought, well, you know, I can try that on this and came up with this. I call them the horns. Uh, put them up there and they had no effect whatsoever. So I bit the bullet. I took the thing down and said, I'm going to have to take this thing apart and do a very thorough search of what's going on inside. Well, here's the first thing I noticed. This is the big giant capacitor in there that is uh, moved in order to tune the antenna. And note that the plates of the capacitor did not line up. Something was weird uh, regarding this. They were a little bit loose. They could be moved around a little bit. Uh, and this looks like uh, this uh, is also the case of uh, where the plates are the maximum amount open. And they've come all the way up out of here and, and have come up to the point where they're actually starting to re-enter on the other side. Okay, so as we tune this from high frequency, which uses low capacitance, to lower frequency, which uses higher capacitance, where it wants to resonate more, um, we see the blades uh, turning here. Here they're turning a little bit more. Okay. They've turned more, and now they have stopped. This is the point where they hit the limit switch, okay? The blades are not fully engaged down at the low frequency end. And I thought to myself, good grief, is this it? Is it as simple as a positioning error? Well, yes, it was. This is a picture right here of the limit switch and you can see the limit lever there. Let me get this uh, at a little different angle. Here you are. Uh, down at the bottom of the plates that rotates with them is a limit lever, okay? And when it gets up to the limit, it hits the limit switch and turns it off so that it can't go any further. The limit lever is put on wrong, and it's in the wrong place so that it actually turns off the meshing of the capacitor before it is completely done. Well, um, you know, I'm not gonna, now that I know what the problem is, I'm not going to, to do nothing. Fortunately, the MFJ uh, warranty uh, is unique. This warranty is not void for owners who attempt to repair defective units. Or in other words, owners who attempt to repair defective units are not voiding their warranty. In fact, they'll even give you technical consultation. Well, I, I didn't consult because I knew what I needed to do. Um, you can't turn this motor and hence the rotor by pushing the rotor. The gearing is, is too steep. So with a 332nd inch Allen wrench into the little hole right here, that decoupled this switch from the rotor of the capacitor. And uh, that was good because this just wasn't going to turn. So uh, I didn't want to hurt anything. Note that there's another decoupler there. And then on the other side is the uh, geared down shaft coming out of the motor. Now, so you've got this loose 
And then there's this nut right here that holds on the limit lever, also holds on the plates, which are compression held uh, from right here. So after loosening that, I got a uh, open-ended wrench down in there. That's 7 sixteenths inch open-ended wrench to loosen the nut. And then I was able to move the limit lever so that it hits the limit switch uh, when it is supposed to and not too soon. Okay, so it hits the limit switch later and uh, after all the plates are fully meshed. And uh, the answer is, uh, the answer to the question, did that solve the problem? Answer, yes, it did. Uh, while I had the thing completely naked, I, I took this picture of it to show what the different parts are. There's that small motor geared down uh, that moves those plates. It takes the better part of a minute to completely mesh them or unmesh them. This black loop right here is what is actually attached to the coax. And this little uh, coupling loop is what feeds the big loop. Okay, and this is a common and a, a standard loop design. So let's take a look at how well it, uh, it works with the new one, what frequency we can go down to. This did fix the problem. It gets all back together. And I've pushed this all the way down. We should have meshed the plates as far as they can. And you see that they've got a 1.6 SWR here at 6954 uh, below, the, uh, uh, below the 40 meter band. So that's pretty good. So it now covers the entire 40 meter band. All that was required was to take it apart and repair the manufacturing defect. You know, I'm at a little bit of a loss for what to say. Um, it was fixable. It was easily fixable, actually, uh, once I figured out what was going on. Uh, however, I should not have had to fix it. Now, this is the kind of thing that should have been caught in a very simple QA test, QC test, uh, prior to uh, closing each one of these units up is a, a very fundamental question. Does it mesh the, complaints, the, the capacitor plates completely and does it unmesh the capacitor plates completely? It really does appear as though uh, that check was not made. And uh, I'm, I'm disappointed. Um, I did also note that uh, of the many screws that held the two halves of the protective case together, there were a couple cases when I first got the, the, uh, uh, the antenna that they were not properly screwed together. A screw was through one piece of plastic, but not the other. Uh, these things speak of haste in manufacturing. And I know they were running behind. I know they were back ordered, but this is this is not good. This is not goodness to do that. This is an expensive antenna, uh, and it can be expected that routine checks for how much the mesh is uh, ought to be completed. I am not one of the people who loves to rail against MFJ products. I have quite a number of MFJ products myself including their little QRP radio, antenna tuners, couple different antenna tuners, um, all sorts of things like that. Uh, also, MFJ published my first book, and it's still in print, still there 20 years later. Uh, so pick that up and read it. <laughs> but I hope that MFJ will make note of this and will kind of make a promise uh, to its ham uh, customers that whatever you buy from MFJ has been checked out and operates it the, operates the way it's supposed to. So anyway, the antenna is fixed. I'm going to do some more work now and see what kind of response I can get on 40 meters. As I noted earlier, it works great on 20. And we'll go from there. So thank you very much for watching. Please click like. Please also subscribe. Those two numbers uh, really help uh, YouTube 
decide which uh, channels are good ones. So please click like, please subscribe, use both feet when walking, and uh, please, yeah, <laughs> my mind went blank. Okay, please click like, please subscribe, use both feet when walking, check out the tip jar, check out uh, the Patreon page, and until next time, 73.